and hello everyone welcome back to another flask tutorial so in the previous tutorial we discussed a bit about error handling in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at sessions now if you have worked with php you would know what a session is but even if you haven't it's fine a session is like a little bit of storage that the website uses to keep your data but only until you leave the website. So if you have something like a cookie, that data will persist. So when they visit the website again, that cookie data would still be available for the website to use. But you can't say the same about sessions. Sessions, they delete themselves once you leave the website. So let's get a few examples on the screen. Now all sessions on the website is by default encrypted. So we need a special secret key that will help us decrypt it since it's encrypted. So let's just go app dot secret key and we can just make this equal to whatever secret key you want. Generally you want the secret key to be more difficult to figure out because if someone has the secret key they can decrypt any data you stored here and usually you do not want this data to be decrypted so i would generally recommend getting a password manager maybe and putting a randomly generated password in there a nice long one but for just this demonstration purposes we can just go poop now let's use a login example here so let's go at app.route slash login. We can have two methods. So methods is equal to get and post since you, we want to be able to do get and post requests here. Then we can define a login function. And this login function will first check what the type of request is. So if request dot method is equal to post then we want to do our post stuff and then of course after that if there it's a get request we can just return a normal login page so just return render template and here we can just say login dot html cool let's create a template for that login dot html and here we can do a few things. So first I would like to just create a basic form. Now generally when you create HTML pages like this, you don't want to constantly have to repeat this whole thing whenever you create the page. Instead, we can use something to extend with. So let's say we want to get rid of having to do that whole HTML block. All we do is we create another template. We call it base dot HTML and this will contain all of the base code for our whole website. You can say HTML and you can ignore most of this. Nothing here is really important. So you don't have to worry about it. However, however, we can remove this title and all of that here. There is there it's not important, you can remove it. So it can just be like this and it will be perfectly fine as well. And in here to put data in here dynamically, what we could do is we could say block and then what the block name should be in this case we could say head because this is for the head of the page and then of course here we can then just end off the block so end now whenever we declare a block head on one of our pages the code will automatically be entered into this block here and we'll get to an example of this in a second and then for the body we can do the same but instead of saying head we can say body and whatever this is called it doesn't matter you can call it anything you want I just call it head and body to make it simple now that we have that we can go here to the login page and we can extend that base HTML page we made so if I go here I can say extend base.html so we're extending this base HTML page and then now we can declare a block. We can say block head. And then of course, 
int block. And just like that, we can now put data in here and this data will automatically appear here. So it will automatically be filled in here. Take note this head here and this head here, they should be the same. So if I change this to XXX, then here I have to change this to XXX as well. And here, let's put a title. So title, login to website. And there we go. Let's just make sure this formats neatly. Now I can do the same for the body, since we now also have a body we want to fill in. So we can just say body. And we can just create a form that is of post request. The action will be to this page, so it doesn't matter. And here we can just put some inputs. And we're going to say input of type text and its name will be username so the user's username of course and then we can just add a br tag we can have an input of type password with the name password and then finally a button submit with the type submit there we go now this code here will be plopped into this code here. So everything inside of this blockhead that is on login because we extend base HTML. So everything inside of this blockhead will now be thrown in here. And let's actually see that happen in action. So this will render the login page. So all we have to do is we just have to run the code and see it. So we go here we go to slash login. And it seems a request was imported. We do not want to import request. From there, we might want to import it from Flask as well, or Flask instead. Now, when we go to our page here, we refresh, there's our login page. Login to website. Even though most of our code is here for the body tag, you'll notice when we go here, and we open up our developer console, which can be done by right clicking developer tools and inspect. If we then go to elements, you'll notice here we have a hit with all of the things we already set in base.html. And then we have a body. And we can do something interesting by just going P here and saying I am cool. And now you'll notice. When we refresh, this body also has an I am cool here, but then it also has a form. We don't have a form here. However, we are adding the form here. This is very, very powerful with templating, mainly because this templating here allows us to split our code into more understandable chunks. You'll notice with applications such as React, where you split things into two components, Everything is a lot simpler to read because there's just a bunch of components. It's not just one massive 1000 line page. It is 10 smaller 100 line pages. Great. So now that we have the basics of that out of the way, we can actually get to the real source of this tutorial. Now here with the app, we can get the user's username and we can store it inside of a session. So first let's go here and just say, session dot permanent is equal to true and of course session needs to be imported from flask so this is an optional feature but this is a session as permanent so the next session will be a cookie so it will basically store the data inside of a cookie instead of a session so if you want your session data to be deleted once the user leaves the page you should remove this permanent here in this case, since the user is logging in, we want to keep them logged in, but generally you can just remove this if you wanted to. Then we can say session, and then what you want to store. In this case, let's just store uname for username. And that is equal to request dot form, and we can just specify username. So currently we're not going to really do anything with this password here because it's just kind of there to look nice. And this will store the username inside of the session. And then we can redirect. So return, redirect. And of course, redirect comes 
comes from flask and then we can redirect to if you remember this one url 4 and then we can just say index and in here we can just also import url 4 if you remember this this basically generates a url for you based on a function you pass in let's create an index page and this will just basically be a very basic page just to tell you you are logged in yet again we are going to extend based html so i'm just going to copy everything here and here we can then say home page and in the body we can just go h1 you are logged in there we go and in here we can create ourselves an index page so at app.route forward slash define index then we can check if you name so username in session so this will check if the username is stored in the session or not then here we can say return render template index.html and then logged in is equal to true in fact we can actually just go logged in is equal to you name in session since it will return true or false there we go now we have this logged in variable here we can then go to some place like index html and here where it says logged in we can actually check if they are now logged in by going and creating ourselves a ginger tag and we can go if not logged in so if they are not logged in very python like then we can do something otherwise else and then finally we can just go end if so if they're not logged in we can just say uh, login and it just created a tag that goes to slash login here there we go now we have a basic login page which checks if the user is logged in if they are it returns this otherwise if they are not logged in it will or if they are logged in it will say you are logged in if they're not logged in it will further in this let's test it out if i were to refresh here and then i were to go to diagonal and just put some random text here you are logged in and now if we go to our inspector tool here we go to application so let's actually go to cookies and here it goes because we want to save it as cookies since we made it permanent right here so now when we go back here and let me just switch this over to the other side you'll notice we have a session and then a value that's encrypted we can't see this value however our application can easily figure out what this value is all we need to do is we need just need to say something like print session you name now when we refresh and we look inside our terminal you'll see we get to diagonal now to delete this session token we have we can go define logout and as we go to slash logout and it should be app.route of course at app.route and in here we can just say session dot pop and this will delete something for us so we can say you name and we can just say none so this will basically replace you name with the value none and we can just redirect to the url for and let's redirect to index just so we can actually see how index looks so now we have two things here if they're logged in it shows something if they're not logged in it shows something else so now here uh, let's close this for a second you are logged in if i go to slash logout and this should return redirect my bad refresh and since your name currently doesn't exist since we popped it it will first a key error but now if we go to index 
and it's throwing error because the session doesn't have a uname there so it can't actually give us that session and now if we refresh we should see login here yes then when we log in we submit we are now logged in so you use pop to unlog in yourself or to delete that session so log out and I will delete the session and here it just says log in here now so it's as simple as that to work with sessions so they're very similar to cookies however sessions can be said to not be permanent so once you leave the website the session will expire and all of that data saved in the session will be deleted and that's that thank you all for watching i hope you all enjoyed and i will see you all again in the next flask tutorial